Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to introduce Angelo Keeley here today on the Zaddy Zone. Angelo, we've been friends for a while. Could you uh, inter- just introduce yourself a little bit? Tell us who you are. Yeah, I like the openness of that. Uh, I'm My name is Angelo. That's probably one of the most distinguishing aspects of me. No, I, uh, I have a company called Keon, which is a supplement company. I am the father of two kids. One's 10, one's eight. I'm married and uh, I'm a gigantic Luke fan. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's one thing that you would put in your bio. Like one of the first few <laughs> things you mentioned is Keon kids and me. Uh, I think so, man. We actually, wow. uh, I think people don't realize like literally, I don't know if I asked or someone else from my team asked you one time years ago to do a special announcement for our Christmas party. That's how big of Luke fans we are at Keon. And I remember I did it and it was, uh, I impersonated the, your, your co-founder, Ben, Gre- ben Greenfield who has this kind of voice also like he kind of it's this voice that's kind of also a uh, relaxed voice so he'll say things like like the opening of his podcast sounds like this fun fitness family am i hitting that on the <laughs> name <laughs> that's a, you do it very well you do it better than almost anyone almost as well as ben <laughs> <laughs> mate I, there's a few things i'd like to get into today Firstly, I'd like to talk, uh, I'd li- like to later talk about what it's like to be a dad and a CEO and how you find time to do both of those things or how you balance that. I also want to talk about, you used to have a course called Create Your Life, and I know that you don't do that anymore, but I want to talk about that because I know that that was something that you did do, and I think that it ha- it's going to serve my audience really well. But firstly, I'd like to talk about something that I've been taking for years and I don't understand it at all, which is part of why I wanted to have you on this podcast. Cause I was like, I take amino acids and I don't know why. And I've been doing it for years. Like literally when I was a, it got unhealthy. My obsession with Ben Greenfield for some time, your co-founder, like anything he'd say to take, I was taking it. And I started taking amino acids at that time. And I didn't know why. And so I thought, well, I need to understand why I'm actually taking this stuff. Like, why am I taking? before I answer that, like the analytical reason, what is the emotional reason? Like you just started taking it and you believe in it. And so you just keep doing it. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a trust. I have a trust in Ben. That is like, honestly, the, when he was in, he was, he was doing this uh, bodybuilding phase or like a muscle building phase a couple of years ago. And, and I literally, I just became like unhealthily obsessed with his podcast and everything he was talking about. And that's when I started taking it. And that, that was it for me. And I just didn't need any more proof. I, li- I mean, oftentimes in life, sometimes we literally are so motivated by another person and how inspiring they are that we do what they do. And it actually does work and creates value and benefit for us. I think luckily essential amino acids actually have tons of value. I'm glad that you, uh, that that was the thing that you copied and that was the thing that you followed blindly because there's a bunch of other stuff that maybe wouldn't be as meaningful. So uh, the Coffee basic enemas. break coffee enemas i i'm not going to comment on any of the other things i'm just going to say essential amino acids are very (laughs) legit very legit in terms of lots of science hundreds of studies so uh i this is the big i maybe i'll start with like a big idea and i think that'll that'll persuade you or help you understand what's going on so of the major macronutrients carbohydrates fat and protein protein is very distinct carbohydrates and fat primarily are used as energy they're turned into atp in your body and it's literally like the fuel source. Protein can be used for that, but the primary role of protein is actually to help you rebuild the proteins in your body. Mm-hmm. The protein that you eat as a food and the proteins in your body are both made up of these things called amino acids. There's 20 amino acids that build up the protein inside of a piece of chicken, and there's 20 amino acids that build up the protein that's inside of your muscle tissue, your liver, your heart, your kidneys, all these things. And the way that the proteins in your body function is that they only have basically a certain uh, half-life. And at some point, they recycle themselves or they break themselves down to serve other parts of the body. So the proteins right now in your body are to some degree breaking down into the individual 20 amino acids going into your blood. And then some of them are being reused to rebuild that same tissue 
or rebuild that same, those same proteins or to build other proteins. Some are lost though. You end up just peeing them out as urea. So you have to replace mm. those amino acids in your blood to then help rebuild all the proteins in your body. So when you eat protein, you break down the protein, it gets broken down to these individual amino acids and you utilize those amino acids to rebuild all the proteins in your body, rebuild, rebuild your liver, your heart, your spleen, your kidneys, your skin, your eyeballs, mm. um, your, mm. the neurotransmitters even in your brain. Um, and the distinctness of essential amino acids is that essential amino acids are actually the active component in a complete protein. Oftentimes people talk about complete proteins as just saying they have the essential amino acids, whereas non-complete proteins have, don't have enough of the essential amino acids. And the, the main idea is just your body, your body, your body can't make them. They're essential mm -hmm. because you have to eat them, but it's more, the idea is more potent than that. They actually are the active component of the protein that stimulates protein synthesis. So when you take mm. essential amino acids as a free form supplement, they are much more effective and efficient than whole food protein at stimulating new protein synthesis. So why would that matter? If you're really inactive, but generally eating kind of well, like 20 year old, you can probably consume enough protein to be fine. And even mm. if you're really disciplined and you're 40 years old and you're eating really well, um, you can eat enough protein to generally get the essential amino acids that you need. But most of us are not eating optimally. They're not eating enough protein. And on mm -hmm. top of that, as you age, you have a harder and harder time breaking down the protein into the individual amino acids. And your body is less sensitive to those amino acids stimulating protein synthesis. So if you're aging, another good reason to be if you're an athlete, if you're working out before you work out, while you're working out, after you work out, if you're trying to lose weight, or if you're recovering from some kind of injury or disease where your body is having a harder time with stimulating new protein synthesis, an essential amino acid supplement is much more efficient and effective. It's like hydrocharged protein. It's not protein. It's, it's taking like the active components of the protein instead of all the other stuff that's in the protein. So you probably liked it because you were... Um, I know you're a guy that trains regularly, mm -hmm. physically. And so when you do that and you take essential amino acids, if you take it before you train, you'll actually get three times the protein synthesis as, as like a whey protein before training. And if you take it after, it greatly reduces recovery time. So it just helps you physically feel stronger and better and helps you with like overall, all the functions that essential amino acids function in your body, but especially if you're really active, if you're aging, et cetera. Yeah, got it. So the makeup of these nine essential amino acids creates, is it nine? Uh, not, uh, creates a whole protein, a complete protein. Is that correct? Uh, not quite. So really okay. the um, proteins, like the protein in your, in your body, the proteins in your body are made up of all 20 of the amino acids. But mm. when we talk about a complete protein in our diet, like if we're evaluating, is chicken a complete protein? Are legumes, is rice, are these complete proteins? The, the, the question is, do those individual dietary protein sources contain all nine of the essential amino acids in a sufficient amount to stimulate protein synthesis? And basically all proteins, even plant proteins, they contain some amount typically of all the essential amino acids, but in very minute amounts. And thus, mm -hmm. if you're trying to get a complete protein source, from only a plant-based diet, you would likely combine two different, like multiple plant sources to get all the Got amino it. acids. Yeah. Whereas with animal proteins, including vegetarian ones like milk, uh, egg whites, they are complete proteins. They have all nine and they're actually very rich in all nine of those. So it's, it's not so much the definition of like, like what makes a protein complete in our body. It's more how we, how we critique dietary choices. Yes. And then why would it be so important that it could uh a protein is complete rather than not complete? Is it because it makes it more bioavailable to us? Um, because if it's not complete, this goes to the essence of the idea of the, the essential amino acids. Mm -hmm. You will not stimulate protein synthesis without all nine essential amino acids. Got so it. basically, so a perfect example is you consume collagen. Collagen right. is not a complete protein. So if you're trying to hit certain daily protein goals for the purpose of uh, building or maintaining muscle, just overall having healthy organ function, taking collagen on its own is deficient. It doesn't have all nine of the essential amino acids, so it will not stimulate the protein synthesis. It may, here's a clear example of a study. So they did a stu there are many studies, but this is a very clear one. They gave people a dose of only the nine essential amino acids in the proportions that they exist in steak. They gave the nine essential amino acids plus the other 11, 
non-essential in the proportions they exist in steak. And then they gave them only the 11 non-essential amino acids as they exist in steak. When they consumed them, it was the exact same amount of protein synthesis, meaning the essential and amino acids, the nine essential amino acids provide all of the, provide all of it. They are the thing that stimulates the protein synthesis. So the non-essential amino acids are like, a, they are building blocks that your body then uses to help build new muscle tissue and help build new proteins. But, mm -hmm. but they are, but if you do not have the nine essential ones, your body will not even kickstart that process. Yes. Now tell me why protein synthesis is so important. So protein synthesis is so important. Maybe here's a way to enter into it. Um, lots of people think muscle is solely used to help you lift heavy things or mm -hmm. to run across, you know, uh, a field or something. But muscle is actually the reservoir of amino acids for the rest of your body. The reason for that being is I think it's pretty clear, like, oh, if I, if I stop eating protein, I don't eat enough, I might start to waste away, right? Like my muscles start, might start to get smaller. The reason mm -hmm. for that is because your organs cannot waste away. If your organs waste away, you die. It's that right. simple. So yes. literally your heart, the proteins in your heart are in a constant state of this thing I started off talking about called muscle protein turnover. Mm -hmm. The proteins in your heart are breaking down into individual amino acids. And some of the old ones, you pee them out. The ones that are mm -hmm. still good enough get reused to rebuild the proteins that make up your heart. You must consume, though, more proteins and more essential amino acids. You must consume more essential amino acids, quite frankly, through mm -hmm. your diet to help rebuild that, that, those proteins that make up your heart. If you don't consume enough in your diet today, this week, this month, your body will start breaking down the, the, your muscle tissue to get the amino acids into, into the blood to help rebuild your heart. Wow. So basically, you have to, you have to consume essential amino acids. And, and in no way would I advise anyone to stop eating protein. Like you should definitely eat foods. You should eat whole protein diet, rich, you know, normal, healthy foods that are rich in protein. Um, mm -hmm. But you're doing it to get the essential amino acids out of it to literally help kickstart this protein synthesis to help rebuild all these parts of your body that need to be uh, rebuilt as new proteins. Yeah. So kind of what I'm hearing is if the heart is in need of new amino acids, it takes it from the muscle. And if you're not eating enough essential amino acids, it'll take it from the muscle at the cost of the muscle. So your muscles will start exactly. to disintegrate and your, uh, but, but so your heart is okay. And if your body isn't getting enough essential amino acids over time, your heart will start to fade away too. Like your internal organs will start to fade away. Is that correct? Exactly. That is correct. And so wow. this is the this is the best case for why you would want to not only um, reduce body fat as you age, like as you get older, there's there's a lot of studies that show that obesity leads to is is tied to like all cause mortality. Like you get there's all yes. different kinds of diseases you could potentially develop from being overweight. But mm -hmm. there's in many cases even stronger correlations between lean muscle. Building and maintaining lean muscle. And this doesn't mean being a bodybuilder. This just means like yeah having having good lean muscle for a, a healthy physique as you age is basically a savings account for later in life when you get injured maybe like you fall down when you're mm -hmm. 70 or you catch a cold and you really can't move for a while you get some kind of disease you can't move because at that time you're not able to keep training your muscles you're not able to um, also digest protein as well and so you just start feasting on that muscle tissue to help supply the amino acids for the rest of your body yeah, it's such a funny discussion, isn't it? Because so many people think about it in an aesthetic sense. They're like, I don't, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of my listeners are females and they no doubt are thinking, I don't want to be bulky. And it's not actually about that. I mean, so we're thinking about it in an aesthetic sense rather than in the sense of like muscle is life-saving. Yes. If you want to go for the vanity sense, though, I think there's a super strong, like most superficial vein case for muscle for, for that as well. And this is not. I do. I always okay. want to go there. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, um, <laughs> first of all, like getting bulky is, is hard. Like those bodybuilder people, like they spend a lot of time in the gym and lift a lot of weights and eat a lot mm -hmm. of protein. Like, they work really hard to that. You're not going to like suddenly get really bulky. Um, but overall, when you consume protein and when you consume essential amino acids as a free form supplement, 
something happened. You basically stimulate your, uh, it's something called diet induced thermogenesis. I'm getting nervous about using too scientific -y of terms. No, <laughs> please like, give it to me. It's okay. 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 So diet induced, I mean, it comes from your diet, thermogenesis, mm -hmm. this increased heat. And mm -hmm. the reason why you, your metabolism increases when you consume the protein is because your body's having to break down the protein. But then also you can imagine the energy used to help rebuild proteins to help rebuild the proteins throughout your body, whole body protein synthesis, your organs, but also the muscle requires a lot of energy. So the energy burned literally to break down the protein and to build new muscle, et cetera, in your body burns more calories than eating carbs or fat. It's just a scientific fact. So when you eat protein, you actually, the, the, the protein or the amino acids themselves increase your metabolism. They're a much more efficient uh, food source in that way if you're trying to control calories. On top of that, yeah, wow. when you have, everyone has this thing called your, your, your resting metabolic rate, your, your basal metabolic rate. When I'm just laying in bed, I burn a certain amount of calories simply to keep my body alive. Mm -hmm. The more lean muscle you have, the higher your metabolic rate. So I'm not talking about like putting on like 10 pounds and getting super bulky, but if you put on like two pounds of muscle throughout your whole body, having like toner legs and tone butt, and I'm selling, I'm trying to sell it to your female audience and like, you like nice yoga arms, like whatever you want to call it. Right. Yeah. And, it, and it, you replace a little bit of the fat with muscle. You increase your metabolism, just doing nothing. Just as you just lay in bed, you're burning more calories and all the food choices you make, you're always going to be burning more calories simply by the fact of having more muscle. On top of that, and, that, and that's because, just think about it, all of that muscle includes little tiny proteins. And those little tiny proteins, as I described earlier, are kind of constantly breaking down and rebuilding themselves. And that requires energy to do. Mm -hmm. And so you have to consume more calories to do that. If you don't consume as many, you simply stay leaner. On top right. of that, if you have some lean muscle and you exercise, you go for a run, you do yoga, you do Pilates, whatever it is that you do, the more lean muscle you have, the more calories you burn during that physical activity. So literally, if, you, if I could just convince your audience to replace three pounds of your fat with three pounds of muscle, so it's not mm -hmm. getting bulky, but just make that switch, you're going to be burning more calories at rest, more calories when you exercise, and even the foods that you would choose to eat, like choosing to consume a little bit more protein instead of a little bit more carbs or fat, Yes, that itself will also increase your metabolism. So- Get hot now and age well. Great. Yeah, see, that makes sense to me. <laughs> now, that makes sense to me. And, and, and okay, so then, you know, if eating more protein does all that and it helps you build that nice lean muscle that, help, that increases your metabolism naturally, even, even at rest, what role, this is the, the crux of the question, what role mm -hmm. does amino acids play in that? Like, how do we think of proteins versus amino acids? How can I think about this better? Great question. So what I would say is think about the active component of the protein being essential amino acids, and that's what you're ultimately trying to get. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the recommended daily allowance, it says 0.4 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Mm -hmm. So I'm not assuming people weigh this amount, but it's easier to choose like a simple e even number of 100 pounds. If you weighed 100 yep. pounds, that would mean you should eat at least 40 grams of protein per day. And that is to literally just maintain organ function. If you want to have this more um, vibrant, beautiful physique and longer life with more vibrancy and it set yourself up to be a better um, survivor of different types of diseases and illness and injuries, et cetera, as you age, you would want to aim much higher. You'd want to aim about a gram of protein per pound of body weight per day, mm -hmm. which would be 100 yeah. grams of protein. I think for most people, when they start to look at that, they're like, wow, 100 grams of protein. It seems like a lot at first. They're like, oh, it seems like a lot. I think if you start to look at food choices, you can be like, wow, if I add a little bit of this protein powder or I take some Greek yogurt, like, oh, I could get like 20 grams at a time. And it starts to seem, it starts to seem easier. If yes. you think about it within that context, essential amino acids make it even easier. Mm -hmm. And that's because for one gram of essential amino acids, it's worth at least twice as much as one gram of protein. That is because in a gram of high, high quality protein, like egg whites, whey protein, about 40 to 45% is essential amino acids. So less than half. Whereas when you take essential amino acids, the whole thing 
is right. the essential amino acids. So when in a yes. healthy young adult, outside of an exercise period, one gram of essential amino acids is basically equal to two grams of protein. Now, I would never encourage someone to replace the core 40 grams of protein that you eat per day with that. But when you start right. to look at it that way, like, wow, I could have one serving of essential amino acids and it's like a light fruity drink. You know, it, it's like we have like a watermelon or yes. mixed berry or mango berry or something like that. And all that. Yeah. Yep. And, and it's a light drink that um, is very calorically efficient compared to something like these food you know, these food type items that gives That's me right. the equivalent of 10 grams of protein for the essential amino acids. Suddenly it makes it much easier to hit, to hit higher daily protein intake goals mm -hmm. while just getting the essential amino acids that I really want. So I, rather than saying like, it's the thing that's going to replace protein, it's one more tool that you can use for a daily vibrant life. You know, it's like you take, yes. you, you know, wake up first thing in the morning and have a glass of aminos. You've already gotten five, five grams of essential amino acids, the equivalent of 10 grams of protein. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. um, yeah. or if you want to, if you want to use it before exercise, it also is really good for exercise. It, it reduces muscle fatigue. It improves the amount of results. Like it actually improves, uh, the muscle protein synthesis significantly and reduces the mm. breakdown. So it helps you from getting a sore. So taken before, during, or after exercise, it really enhances the exercise and helps you recover better, but also hits you hit, it helps you hit that goal. So I think it's, it's like one more tool in our toolbox. Like, yeah. do you like Greek yogurt? Greek yogurt's a great tool. If you don't like Greek yogurt, don't eat Greek yogurt. Do you like eggs? If you like egg whites, they're a great tool. If you don't like them, don't use them. If you like kind of these nice fruit flavored drinks that help you hit that, use it. If you don't, don't. I mean, I, I'm a big proponent of it because I think, um, yeah, it's just highly efficient. And then I think for people who, this is maybe less your audience, but um, as we age, our ability to break down protein and for it to stimulate protein synthesis reduces. So mm -hmm. it starts at age 30, but it's really like age 40, age, age 50. Suddenly protein is less effective, but the free form essential amino acids are not. So at that mm. point, it starts to be that essential amino acids are three times as effective as protein. And for like elderly, it becomes four or five times as effective. That's because you don't have to break down the protein. It is immediately bioavailable, the amino acids. And, mm, the, yeah. proportions are, and the proportions are basically perfect. Like they've been studying this for the last 40 years. And we've discovered through studies for NASA, for the NIH, for sports foundations, like what's the perfect proportions of amino acids to help stimulate new protein synthesis. So in kind of in aging populations or in certain clinical situations, it's much more effective than protein. But that's kind of when you're under duress of some kind. For a daily habit, you know, it helps you hit those higher daily needs for essential amino acids. And it can be really useful around exercise. Yes. It seems like, okay, so Here's how I might try and teach somebody what amino acids are. Think about your body is always breaking down. As you use it, it's, it's breaking down and it needs to be reformed all the time. Now, you can eat protein, which contains a high amount of these amino acids that rebuilds. But you can also go, go straight to the source and take essential amino acids, which your body doesn't have to turn or, or move into a natural source of amino acids. It's the natural rebuilder right there that you've just taken. How's that? That's it. Perfect. Woo and one more selling point for people who are, you know, more kind of plant forward or vegan, mm. essential amino acids, not all, but Keon Aminos and some other brands are vegan. So that uh. just makes it you know, it's a really awesome source of an, of of like kind of ideal vegan source of of essential amino acids, where lots of lots of plant foods typically aren't. Yeah, that's interesting. So, a, a plant protein like a soy or a, a pea is very popular right now. Are they high in these essential amino acids? Is there enough of them to make them a, a kind of good protein source? Uh, soy is. That's why soy has yeah. been so popular for so long. For, yeah. for that reason, it is high in the essential amino acids. Um, quinoa, buckwheat. I think w some of the issues with these is that they don't only have. So here's another here's another reason for considering essential amino acids. Um, when you consume a grain, there is some protein in it, and inside that protein there are some essential amino acids. There's also lots of carbohydrates. 
So mm. it's very high in calories relative to the amount of essential amino acids. Whereas when you eat something like an egg white, it's much lower in calories relative to the essential amino acids that you get. So even in an ideal source like a like a soy, a plant source like soy, mm -hmm. um, there it, it's pretty caloric relative to the right. amount of essential amino acids you get. So yes, you can you can eat a plant only diet and you can combine lots of different plant sources. It's more ideal to combine different types of plant sources to eat a lot of different. Um, Plant sources basically get a more complete essential amino acid diet daily, yes. but you're going to eat a lot of calories to do it. So it's yeah, so quite Adam, hard to eat a hundred. Yeah, it's quite hard to eat a hundred grams of protein today if you're only eating plants, unless you're yes. like if you're a long distance runner. I think it works actually pretty well for like endurance type athletes. Like if you're just burning thousands of calories a day, then you yeah, can that eat makes sense. tons of calories. That makes sense. But for somebody who's looking to lose weight, who needs caloric efficiency, AKA the nutrients, more nutrients in less calories, an animal source of protein sounds like it's better. It is. It yeah. simply is. Yeah. And then you kind of go down the chain and it's like whey protein isolate and then essential amino acids are like the most efficient. Yes. Yes. In so terms of calories. Tell me about yourself. Um, I listened to a podcast <laughs> with yourself. I listened to a podcast with you and Ben, and I heard about your kind of health journey. Um, you've, you've like have, have put on weight and then you've lost weight and then you put it back on, then you've lost it. And you've found that there's a really effective way of losing weight. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, I think, well, first of all, I would say like, I don't, I don't attest to like know everything or have all the answers. I simply speak from my experience and, and what I've seen. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was raised in a family that was very focused on health. They were like in the supplement business, in the natural food. I grew up, my parents owned a natural food store and a natural, natural food restaurant. They were into wow. fitness. My mom was a master swimmer. So I got exposed to health very, very young and kind of just, yeah, just soaked in it. And so I've been yeah. exposed to tons of different ideas like my, my whole life and all the trends and all the fads and all this kind of stuff. I think where I've landed now is that there are few things that are probably most important for most people. And the number one thing is, we're not, I'm not saying number one in terms of it's the best, but one of the things is calories. Mm -hmm. The amount of calories consumed and the amount of calories burned in a day will have an impact on total weight. Yeah. That said, another really important factor is, and uh, I don't mean to just like kind of hit again and get on this protein and amino acid thing, but it's your mm -hmm. daily essential amino acid intake. Because mm -hmm. if you cut a ton of calories from your diet, and when you cut those calories, you also cut the amount of essential amino acids you consume through protein or through a, through a supplement, yes. you will not only lose fat, you will lose muscle. Yes. And you can actually lose a pound of muscle from a 750 calorie deficit versus a pound of muscle, pound of fat from a 3,500 calorie deficit. Now it's not perfect. The body's doing all different types of like math and operations and optimizing at different times for different things. And it depends on your exercise. But mm -hmm. basically what I think lots of people do is they, they go through some type of extreme thing where they cut a bunch of calories or they do a juice fast or a cleanse or something like that. And they cut a lot of these uh, healthy nutrients that are proteins, that are yeah. amino acids. And when you do that, you lose a bunch of muscle. So if you starve yourself and you lose a bunch of fat and you lose a bunch of muscle, it's much, and, but then you go back to kind of like your less than ideal behaviors. You eat the foods again that you really shouldn't eat and you're impulsive and you're eating too many calories, et cetera. You will put back on fat and it will be much harder to put back on muscle. And what you end up when you faster, do- you, you because of the basal metabolic rate, because you've lost muscle, your metabolism- Exactly. You've lost muscle. Smaller. Yeah. Your metabolism yeah. is worse. Exactly. Yeah, wow. So it becomes easier to put back on fat because you're not burning as many calories as you used to with that muscle mass. And you do that enough times and then you end up in a very difficult position because you've lost all your muscle and you have a bunch of fat. <laughs> and so yeah. um, I think, you know, the, the, the simplest recipe for sustainable long term health, both for, I think, uh, an, an aesthetic that one aspires to. And I think if different people have different aesthetics and different commitments they're willing to make, you know, it's like, 
I'm still battling at night with my kids around like, man, do I want to be able to have like that dessert with them, et cetera. But like, I choose to have that yeah. dessert and that dessert, it doesn't have a lot of protein in it. It has a lot of other calories. If I've already kind of hit the amount of whatever I've exercised in the day, it's going to mean I'm like, have a little, I have, you know, an extra two pounds of fat on my belly, right? Is that, is that important to me right now? You know, I'm not a model. I'm not an actor. I'm a CEO. It's like, it's important to me to be able to practice kickboxing and feel fit and feel good at the pool. But like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to have 9% body fat. So like I'm okay where I'm at. But um, I think fundamentally it comes down to watching the daily caloric intake, ensuring that you're eating a very high protein diet to maximize the amount of muscle that you maintain as you lose Mm -hmm. weight. Consistent, I think consistent movement of some kind, adherence to movement of some kind. I, yes. pr- I think walking is really great. If you, walking's not a hard thing to do, you can take your calls while walking. You can listen to podcasts and walk. You can meet with a friend and go for a walk. You can burn a lot of calories when you walk. And then if you add some other type of sport, I think if you can add resistance training, it really helps because some form of resistance training, and that could even include, you know, I think forms of things that are more like yoga or Pilates, not traditional resistance training, but it's not a pure cardio activity. Yes. So that you start to build some type of muscle, you'll f- it's much more sustainable to just maintain, t- to maintain and to not have these huge big swings or to not feel stuck. Like you'll see mm-hmm. constant progression. It's not going to be the sharpest progression, right? It's not going to be like, oh, I'm going to just drop all this weight and look perfect. But it's like, yeah. you, you will find that you can maintain it over time through those simple, that's that simple balance. Um, and honestly, it's another good tool. I think using essential amino acids, if when you are trying to cut weight, it ensures that you can cut a lot of other calories from food. Um, but you can help supplement it on top of your protein intake again, to, to maintain that muscle while you lose fat. Yeah. To maintain the nutrients of your body. I think we think about calorie deficit so much of the time in, in the wrong way. We think of calorie deficit as a nutrient deficient. Like we're like, let's break the body down. So it like just gets rid of all this excess weight. And it's like, well, no, actually, if you're going to do it in a careful way and to take care of yourself, you can go into a calorie deficit. So you're, you're eating less calories. So your body does shed fat, but you're also getting the nutrients that are necessary to sustain and help you thrive as you, you know, move more and you get out there and you, you know, your brain function and your heart function or, and those internal organs we were just talking about. I think we need to think of calorie deficits in a different way. Instead of thinking of our bodies going into a deficiency, it's like get the nutrients that that you need and get rid of the nutrients that you don't so much that aren't essential for youth to thrive, right? I think that's, it's honestly, you're trying to do some form of a carbohydrate and fat deficit and not a protein deficit. Yes, yes. (laughs) Yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Well, tell me about how. Tell me about how we can pick a better protein source. I mean, obviously, we just talked about how complete proteins and plant proteins versus, you know, how they're not as calorie efficient. What about picking a protein powder? Like, how do you, re- like, what are things that we should be looking for in a store? Let's start with, like, if we're not plant based or plant focused, like, what's a good idea if we go into a store and we're looking for, you know, a whey protein? What should we be looking for? So, Quick summary again of of protein sources. What you want to find is you want to find a protein, ideally that has a high amount of protein to a lower amount of calories. Mm -hmm. I think typically, unless, unless you're really trying to bulk, like bodybuilders are trying to consume a lot of calories. It's different. But for most people, how can I look for a lot of protein for less amount of calories? Yes. Um, On top of that, you want to find a protein source. Typically, I, I'm not a big fan of plant-based protein powders. Again, I think mm-hmm. if you're looking for something vegan, I would look towards essential amino acids. And that's because to get to a plant protein powder, you have to break down a lot of plant material. And quite simply, plants that grow on the ground and grow in soil end up being quite high in heavy metals. Right. If I just eat a raw or I cook like, like actual plants that come out of the ground, it's okay because it's, it's, it's wrapped around in a bunch of other fiber, other calories, et cetera. But when you try to extract the nutrients from it, you end up getting a lot of heavy metals, like a lot of lead, et cetera. So plant protein powders tend to be, they're very condensed forms 
of um of these plant materials they end up having a lot of heavy metals in it i just i, I try to avoid that so i would generally well, i think that's important though to mention because i don't think we really think about that like when i when i get some kale and i chop it up i'm making eating three leaves of kale and i'm cutting it up or or whenever i'm eating a bowl of peas it's like a half a cup of peas if you're to take and give me a gram of protein I'm going to need a lot of peas, a, ton, a bucket of peas, <laughs> like a, a shit ton of peas. Yes. And I don't think people really take in. If you were to eat that many peas, you would have a really hard time doing it because you couldn't fit that many in, but also digestively it's going to cause you distress. And that's kind of what plant proteins are. Correct. Simply put. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of nuance in that, but that is exactly my concern with them and why I don't consume plant protein powders is because right. Yeah, you're you're uh, you're getting a lot of the bad stuff that's in that huge thing. You would never eat that many peas, right? Yeah, it's it's yeah. that simple. So like you know, uh, pea proteins, rice proteins, hemp proteins. I just generally would uh, you know encourage people to avoid those. Then mm -hmm. what you get left with is there's different types of dairy based proteins like whey, whey protein, whey isolate, casein. If you're like it's more like bodybuilder type thing. I typically encourage people to look towards the whey isolate. And the reason for that, and I would just say a grass fed whey isolate. Again, like when you eat something that comes from an animal and the animal ate a bunch of that grass or a bunch of corn that was, you know, had hormones in it, et cetera, you, and, uh, that does pass through the full food channel to some degree. Right. So mm -hmm. I think looking for a grass fed whey protein isolate typically is like the the first thing I would recommend someone to look at, and that's because the per calorie for a gram of protein is extremely efficient, the most efficient. And basically all you do is you take away protein. They, they basically skim proteins out of milk. And right. then the isolate, they further isolate it and they remove the carbohydrates from it and virtually remove all of the lactose. So even yes. people like myself, that's relatively lactose intolerant. I can very easily consume a whey protein, a grass-fed whey protein isolate with no digestive distress and no kind of, I don't have skin issues or anything like that. Whereas if I consume, you know, if I consume that much of like a, of milk type products, I would probably have more distress around it. So it's right. just, it's really delicious. It's super calorically efficient. It's got awesome protein. And then inside of that protein, the essential amino acid profile of a whey protein isolate is as close to perfect as you can get in a natural source. Wow. Even when you look at essential amino acid supplements that are formulated to be perfect, they're very close to what a whey protein isolate would look like. They don't have all the other essential amino, they don't have all of the non-essential amino acids and uh, they're more efficient still, but like the actual profile of the protein is great. Another good one to look at is egg whites. You know, I think right. I think egg white protein powders, again, they're, they're very efficient relative to... Uh, yeah, for the calories to protein and mm -hmm. they're pretty clean and, and most people can digest them quite well. Um, so those, those are the two I would really encourage people to look at. Again, I brought it up earlier, but collagen is not a complete protein. Collagen right. is awesome for some things. Collagen can be used as a supplement to support hair, skin, et cetera, in a very specific way. But that's because it's not high in these essential amino acids. It's high in very specific non-essential amino acids. Yeah. that are uh, hydroxyproline, proline, glycine that specifically support these other functions of the body. So it's fine to take a collagen. Um, I think it really makes sense. You know, I think people that are like over 50, they find like, they find even more benefit from it, from okay. skin, hair, nails, joints. Um, yeah. But personally, I, I can get, I think my body is able to uh, work with other types of whole food protein sources and essential amino acids to, to create a sufficient amount of those amino acids for my body to have healthy joints, skin, et cetera. Yeah. I think maybe a lot of people have fallen into the, and it's not a trap necessarily, just the idea that collagen is going to help them look better. And it, you know, it's, but as you said, it's not a great, it's not a perfect protein source. It's not like whey, which has all of the essential amino acids, but it is high in things that are, that help support skin and hair. So it, it's a nice supplement, but maybe not uh, the basis for your protein needs. And nor should whey be really. You probably uh, you probably aren't a fan of using too much whey either. Are you? What do? You, how do you do it? Whole foods more than supplements, right? Yeah, I think again. I think think about all these. Like, there's no like perfect right or wrong answer. But okay. a, a whey a whey a whey isolate is a good supplemental source to hit higher daily protein intake mm -hmm. and 
You know, I think if you're choosing between two different snacks, right, and one is shaking up some, you know, a, a whey protein isolate powder with some water or a little bit of milk or something else like that, or having it with blending it up with water and some berries, that is a much healthier decision than, you know, eating a muffin, I think, in that moment. Or... Yes. Or some, you know, other types of things like that. That said, it's like, you know, should I eat that? Or what if I had, um, you know, as a snack, like a little piece of fish and some broccoli? Like, yeah, the little piece of fish and broccoli is probably, I mean, that's pretty good. That's, that's, yeah. I'd probably say that's better for you. It has m even more um, good stuff in it. That said, it's like, it's pretty hard to like prep that many meals and be that perfect all the time. So I think it's, yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a good, decent way to help supplement your diet. Totally. But furthermore, protein is, the most satiating of all the macronutrients. Like if you're looking for a snack and you want to feel full, you know, having a bit of beef jerky, uh, having a high protein snack is probably more helpful than having just an apple and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, an apple and a carrot, for instance. You want to have some supplement with some protein to fill you up. Do you agree? Yeah. Well, yeah. Your stomach actually with the consumption of protein, your stomach secretes certain hormones that then communicate to your body that you are more satiated. So it literally makes you more satiated. It's like, there's an element of it. There's an element of, I think of it feeling like heartier in some ways, but also like if you eat a bunch of salad, there's a lot of fiber. You can feel kind of full from just having consumed so much, but it will start yes. to go away faster. Whereas like with the protein, your body actually communicates to your brain that you've gotten enough. And so that is why also, um, for most people, different people have different bodies, but when you consume particularly a processed food or something like really high in sugar, the sugar in a processed food is, it's not a direct parallel to the amino acid thing, but it's like highly, highly broken down sugar that mm. just, that goes directly into your blood. And so it spikes your blood sugar. And right. when you do that, it creates kind of this big spike and then a bigger crash down which then leads you to having kind of more mood type issues and being yeah. more impulsive than later to eat another not as ideal food source. So it kind of goes back to the same question you asked me earlier about like, you know, what have I found works or doesn't work for fat loss or maintaining a healthier body composition? I think it's trying to avoid spikes and things that are high in sugar, things that are really high in carbs, most processed foods, they just, they lead to spikes. They make you feel they spike your blood sugar and then they crash you. Yeah, that's so interesting. And I and something that I really base my health around is moods. I think I'm a natural, I, I can't say that I'm a naturally moody person. It would be my guess that I'm not. It's actually my surroundings and how I treat myself that makes me moody. For instance, you know, consuming too much sugar or, mm -hmm. you know, having, you know, or not moving or, you know, not getting things right. It's so interesting to hear that you can affect your mood with the wrong diet. And I think that if we could tap into that more, maybe we could help ourselves a lot more. So what you're saying is when you consume, especially a processed sugar, it goes in and you, and you, this, this up and then crash causes these mood swings. Is that true? That is true. Yeah. Interesting counterpart to that too. And I typically don't go this much into detail around it, but mm -hmm. neurotransmitters, are chemical messengers in your brain mm -hmm. that are responsible for what we call emotions. And those neurotransmitters are amino acids or the derivatives of amino acids. Right. So having a lower protein diet also contributes to additional stress on your overall mental health. Eating wow. a higher protein diet, I think many people will find if they're eating a lower protein diet and they start to increase the amount of protein that they consume, or even again, just like adding like a scoop of essential amino acids in the morning to their, to their routine, they overall will find a more balanced mood. Wow. Because literally the amino acids are what turn into these neurotransmitters that fuel your brain. You know, on, on a whole uh, separate note of that, you know, it's, uh, I learned a lot about this. We went down the whole formulation, especially of our, we have a sleep product that's entirely amino acid based okay. and just learning and understanding how the increase in tryptophan in the blood then increases to an increased creation of 5-HTP, which then leads mm -hmm. to an increase in serotonin. And that serotonin has a very big impact on your ability to feel sleepy, but then also leads then to the creation of melatonin. So you start to see this chain, like when you eat certain types of foods, that are higher in certain types of amino acids, they literally will affect your mood. 
lots of times I think we can't tell, right? Like we're being so stimulated by social media, by TV, by our friends, by all this stuff. We don't actually notice that if we were to just slow down a little bit and actually make these small modifications to our diet, replacing the sugary thing with, you know, a higher protein yogurt or mm. some whey protein or beef jerky or essential amino acids, um, how much it literally could change the next few hours of our life, how much less dramatic it could potentially feel, how much um, more just like stable and kind of okay we feel yeah. versus the ups and downs of, of, of honestly crappy food. Yeah, no, totally. So tell me about what's in the sleep supplement. I'm, I love, I've stopped actually uh, supplementing around bedtime. I just, I ran out of my magnesium and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to take anything. <laughs> And, uh, I've been okay. <laughs> Honestly, I'm the type of person I'm annoying to talk to if you make supplements, because I don't actually feel the difference of anything like nothing. Everyone's like, oh, so you take all these things. What, what do you feel makes a difference? And I'm like, I just go off what I'm told. Apparently magnesium's really good for you. I take, mm -hmm. it, you know, but tell me what's in your sleep supplement. <laughs> um, so honestly, sleep is a tricky one too, because, uh, people, people's brain chemistry is quite different. And even as I just described, depending on how you eat and what you do daily, how much media you consume, how late you watch TV, like all these kinds of things can really affect your mood and emotions. Um, but overall, if you look at the science of, uh, basically look at sleep science and raw ingredients that have been studied to impact mood and specifically sleep, there's really just three ingredients that have the most research and literature around them that directly contribute to falling asleep faster, mm -hmm. staying asleep, and having overall improved sleep quality as reported by people, right? We can actually measure like brain waves, et cetera, but basically it's people feeling, waking up and feeling more rested. And those three things are tryptophan, which is one of the essential amino acids, mm -hmm. um, but it's in a much higher dose than you would take as part of an essential amino acid supplement. Because when you're taking it like as part of an essential amino acid supplement, you're taking it to help stimulate new protein synthesis. You're not taking it to try to have these certain impacts on your overall brain and mental health. The second yes, one I is- I noticed, if, if, if you don't mind me stopping you mm -hmm. there, because I think the, your essential amino acid supplement is lowest in tryptophan. I think it's the- It is. The, yeah, so, but you're, you're, you're upping it for the sleep. Tryptophan for is sleep. necessary, but it, yeah. Okay, yes, for sleep. Yep. Okay, please um, go on. And, and then uh, GABA, which is a, it's a non-essential, it's not even, it's not even, wouldn't be one of those 11 non-essential. It's, ba it is a neurotransmitter. It's an inhibitory neurotransmitter, basically helps you feel relaxed. Yes. Um, and then the third one is L-theanine, mm -hmm. which is another amino acid. It's, it's also kind of like, a, it's a non-dietary one. Um, and it, it has a very similar effect. And so basically all of these have been studied independently. And then we did a lot of research and combining them together and they just, they, they work. That's really the simplest way to describe it. I mean, I could go a lot into like beta waves and how it gets studied, et cetera, but, but fundamentally they, when combined in these specific clinically doses, they help you fall asleep faster, stay asleep and wake up better rested. Ooh, that sounds nice. I love this. Yeah. So, I mean, try it. And that said, if you, if you're sleeping fine, why add something? Like just in, like enjoy enjoy your sleep. If you're not sleeping fine, try something. <laughs> you know, yeah, maybe. Like... <laughs> you know, it's up and down. Honestly, I think I, I'm usually sleep really well. I have trouble sometimes getting to sleep. That's the initial the initial hour. I can be a little bit restless. And I've heard that GABA is actually really particularly helpful for that. It is. I mean, GABA, I yeah. mean, really all three, I mean, I get, I get send you all the research, but all three of those have tons of research behind them. Actually, tryptophan has the most. I feel like okay. tryptophan still has this thing, even in the supplement industry, 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 where it's like not sexy enough. It's like, ah, ah tryptophan. It's like this old thing. You know, it's, it's funny. Even amino acids, like they're not this cool new yes. supplement that someone invented, some cool new nootropic and it's blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, it's like, they're just yes. these things that have been around 40 years, but they work. Like we've done 30 studies with them, you know, and it, it's clear it works for all these people. Um, but yeah, GABA, the one thing I know about GABA is it's pharma GABA. All of the significant studies that prove the efficacy of GABA are all with a specific form of GABA called pharma GABA. So just Got anyone it. who's, if you're trying to just choose that one, it's also great for, it can be used to help support um, with reducing anxiety, the GABA specifically. Yes. In a more natural way. Yeah. But I've it's really the that. pharma GABA. 
Got it. Got it. So I just want to switch gears because we don't have very long, but I really wanted to hear from you about how you're balancing your life as a CEO and a father. I'm a busy man and I have two kids now and I, um, I want to hear how somebody who's been doing it for a while does it. You know, when I, so before I moved to, I live in Boulder now, before I moved to Boulder, I, uh, I had this like kind of like breaking moment. I was on a retreat, a silent retreat. And I had this breaking moment where like, I finally realized, okay, I'm going to, I just, I chose my then girlfriend who became my wife over everything else. I said like, Carrie is going to be my focus. And I did that. And I was working with Apple in India and I quit my job and I moved to Boulder the next day. And I had no plan for my career. I had no idea what I was going to do. I just like, I just did that. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I think I've just been following that thread. And that thread is like, you know, I'm, I really am going to be human, my human relationships first, all of my human relationships first, like that is what I'm doing. So my wife, and then once I have children, it's my relationship with my children. And then even at my, at my work, I'm like building this company, I lead this company. And yet it's, it's just a bunch of unique individuals that I'm in relationship with. And at the most fundamental level, it's like, I, I, I just have to balance these relationships and I want to be with my children as much as I can be with them. I want to be healthy when I'm with them. I want to be a good role model to them. And, um, and at the same time, I have to earn a living to support them and I need to have my own kind of individuation from them and like be my own person. And so I don't really, there's, I don't mean, I I don't know if you ask me specific questions, maybe there's some kind of like unique hacks I can share, but like what I do is I just try to be real with all the people in front of me whenever I'm with them. And so if I'm really, really, there with my wife when I get home at the end of the day and we're talking about what happened and what's going on, I can read and understand like what's going on with the kids that day and what they need. And maybe if I need to accommodate or I need to take a day off or we need to go make time for this other thing. Um, and that, that leads a lot of decisions. You know, I end up leaving work all the time to go to my kids' school, to go to their events. I, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I coach my son's basketball. I'm doing that like two or three days a week. Um, you know, I just, I make the decisions to, be in people's lives and I'm committed to that. And then everything kind of works out. You know, it's like, I'm not, I'm probably not inventing a bunch of additional work for myself, a a bunch of additional career stuff that, that I I think I used to do that. I had these big ideas of all these certain kinds of career things that I wanted or Mm -hmm. accolades or recognition or success or money. And, um, I'm getting to be successful and I'm not really focusing on that. I'm just focusing on the relationships in my life. It feels like, I don't know if I said anything, Like, did what I say make any sense or I just spin around. No, it made a a lot of sense. It means you prioritize (laughs) people, you prioritize people over everything else. And if you put people first, everything else is kind of falling into place. To me, it sounds like I'm a Christian, right? And it sounds like that's what trusting God is. It's going, okay. I'm not going to worry about all of these other things. I'm just going to focus and be present and love the people and serve the people around me to the best of my ability. And then it's that kind of trust is actually what sets the groundwork for your life. That's what it sounds like to me. I think that is exactly it. Yeah. And that's, I I think that's beautiful. It kind of leads me to my next question because you used to have this course, uh, the create your life course, create your, what was it? Is it? Yeah. Create create your your life life course. course. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, now I, I had a question about this because I really wanted to take take it years ago, but I never did. And uh, but I so but I've still got a question about it, and it relates to this. Now let's just say my goal, because you, the entire idea of this course was you can create your life a little bit. Life isn't just happening to you; you can create it by setting goals and putting into action like how to get there, kind of thing. Let's just say I had a goal because we don't have much time. Let's just say I had a goal. I want to be a more present father. I want to be a present person with my family. How do I, that's the goal. How do I set up, how do I set up actions best so that I can get to that goal? I'm trying to think about how to answer this really succinctly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to offer you one tool. And I think if you did that in a limited amount of time, um, Mm -hmm. The one tool I would encourage you to use is a mind map. And a mind map looks like you drawing a circle on a a normal sized piece of paper Mm -hmm. and you write Luke being a great father in the center of that circle. 
and then you draw lines coming off of it with circles connected to them. And inside those circles, name what that looks like. What is that? What is it for you to be a great father? Like, what would that manifestly be? Would it be a certain amount of time that you spend with each one of your children or something you do for your wife or a way that you, activities you're going to do with them? Like, what are those kind of like the main categories and areas? And then from there too, you can draw off more lines in terms of certain types of commitments or visions that you can imagine engaging in. And you take that piece of paper and you put it up somewhere and you look at it every single day. And I think by having that vision, that map in front of you, and the accountability to look at it every single day, it starts to guide your actions. Now, there's, there's more you can do. There's very specific planning that you can do. There's very yeah. specific uh, you know, timing and cadences of work that you can do. And I'll just give you an example. Like With my wife, for years now, we each do our own mind map, but we also do a, fu- a family mind map. And we have a two-day retreat at the beginning of the year. And that retreat involves like us going for walks. It's not, it's not like a super, like super formal, but you know, like going for hikes and talking and just um, having time to be intimate and you know, just connect and like be with each other. And then envisioning what do we want this next year to be? And we do a mind map for the year. And then every single week we have a family meeting and we come together on a Saturday or Sunday at a certain time. And we look at our mind map and we talk about it and we talk about other types of issues that are coming up around the week so we can continue to manifest it. And from that, we end up building a schedule for the year and like when we're gonna go on certain types of trips and when we're gonna try to do these things that we had envisioned of doing. Um, We talk about our schedule for the week. And so the accountability of having a partner to work with every single week on what that vision is for my family, for being the father and the husband I want to be is very supportive. And then doing some form of like a quarterly shorter retreat, you know, it can be like a day or two where you just really have time to like connect again, to talk. It's not, you know, it's not just like a, like a date or just having fun. It's really engaging my wife in the vision of our life together. Um, So I think, you know, the more you can do that on your own, or you can find a partner to do that with you, it's very fulfilling and meaningful. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot more guidance around what are the most successful ways to do that on an annual basis, on a quarterly basis, on a weekly that kind of make the most sense. Because, you know, I'd say on an annual basis or even biannual, it can kind of help to really like blow things up, to get out of like the ideas of maybe even what you thought you wanted, what you committed to, and to like really get creative, challenge all your notions. Like, do we need to live here? Is this really, really want to be? Is this the career I want? Like, challenge it all and blow it up. You should not do that every week. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, like yeah. week to week, you need to kind of like, just keep moving, keep trucking, even if you don't like it anymore this week, or you're having a hard time, like you just stick with, with it and you keep doing it. So, you know, hopefully those are some ideas that I think are, uh, that, that come from that course and that I personally have found to be very fulfilling for my life. It sounds like write out the goal and look at it often and be willing to rewrite it and write it with somebody who can keep you accountable, who's part of the mind map. That's what I'm getting from that. And that's super, super helpful. I'm going to do that. And I think the mind map, because it's very visual, like it, it's, you can see it. You can see mm-hmm. like in the center, what it is that you're wanting. And then the branches that come off from it versus like a list of goal, like lists are kind of, uh, I, it's harder for me to emotionally relate to a list. Yeah, and it could be any goal in the middle, can't it? Anything. It doesn't have to be, yeah, it doesn't anything. have to be like loving present family man. It can be no, it can be anything. anything. It could be for building a business. It could be for um, getting an acting career off the ground. It could be whatever, mm-hmm. really anything. Angelo Keeley, what a pleasure it is to finally get to chat with you for a whole hour. We went nerdy on amino acids and proteins, and then we ended it this goal family area um so a very well-rounded conversation thanks for being here on the zaddy zone thanks luke i appreciate it man it was fun wait and how can we follow you and keep in touch with you uh i typically direct everyone back just just to keon k-i-o-n which is my company um i i am on instagram though at angelo keely if you if you're curious about me as a human (laughs) (laughs) I, i appreciate that i appreciate that thanks mate thanks so much for your time thanks luke